Hello everyone, Keyboard Alchemist here and welcome back to another Stable Diffusion tutorial. When using AI to generate images, you will often find yourself in a situation where you will need to fix or change only a part of an image while keeping the rest of the image the same. This is where inpainting comes in handy. Automatic 1111 does have a native tool under Image to Image for inpainting, but this tool can be difficult to use and time consuming to get the results you want. Because manually drawing that mask with your mouse is already pretty difficult, and when you mess up when drawing the mask, you can only undo your last brush stroke. On top of that, you can't zoom into the image to help draw the mask more precisely. Honestly, it's like drawing in MS Paint without having an eraser tool or zoom. Then, once you are done with the mask, what gets generated under the mask is oftentimes a luck of the draw. Depending on what it is that you are trying to inpaint, you may get a good result with one try or you may not get a good result with several tries. This can be time consuming and frustrating. We could definitely use a faster and easier method. Here is where InPaint Anything comes in. InPaint Anything is a powerful extension that leverages the output of the Segment Anything model or SAM to automatically create inpainting masks for you, thus eliminating the slow and imprecise manual mask drawing step. It also let you zoom in on your masked image and you can make some adjustments to the mask after it is generated. Here are the topics that we will cover. First, we need to install the InPaint Anything extension. Second, we'll go through an example on how to use this tool. Installing this extension is quick and simple. Go to the Extensions tab, click on Available, then click the Load From button and type InPaint in the search bar. You should see the extension in this filtered list. Note, I have this extension installed already, so it's not showing me the Install button, but you would see the Install button on the right Go ahead and click on the Install button. Wait a few seconds, then go back to the Installed tab. Click on Check for Updates to make sure you have the latest version. Then click on Apply and Restart UI. After the UI restarts, you should be able to see the InPaint Anything tab. If you don't, try reloading your web UI or close your browser and command line window, then rerun your user.bat file to restart automatic 11.11. Note, if you ever need to reload your UI, scroll down to the bottom of your web UI and click on the Reload UI. Now that you have InPaint Anything installed, let's talk about how to use it. Let me show you an example here. First, we have to pick a Segment Anything model and download it. When this is downloading the SAMs for the first time, it could take a couple of minutes because some of the models are 2 GBs. After downloading the Segment Anything model, you need to click Run Segment Anything. This will give you a multicolored segmented map on the right side. There are a few variations of the Segment Anything model. I downloaded and ran each of them with my starting image to do a comparison. We can see that in this case, the larger SAMs do not always equal a better segmentation map. They are just different. And you really have to pick the appropriate SAM depending on what you need to mask. In our example, since we are trying to create a mask for the clothing, you want a model that will give you a single continuous region on the sweater. In other words, one single solid colored region would be the best. This actually makes the fast SAM X and mobile SAM models better choices in this scenario. What I'm trying to say is if you segment your image with one model to start with and you see that the segmentation was not ideal, you should try another model. And maybe one of the smaller SAMs will actually give you a better segmentation of what you need to inpaint in that image. For example, let's say we want to generate a mask of the face, then SAM HQ Vit L. Fast SAM S and Mobile SAM models would not be good choices. The first model grouped the face and hair in the same region, and the other two separated out the eyes. The Fast SAM S model is especially bad here because there are too many jagged edges around the face area. Once you have generated a segmentation map that you like, you will select the area that you want to create a mask by clicking anywhere on the colored region. There is an option to hover over the segmentation map and zoom in by pressing S. You can also close the so-called full screen mode by pressing R. This is handy if you need to select smaller segmented regions. 
After selecting the appropriate regions, click on the Create Mask button, and this will generate a white highlighted mask on the bottom panel. There are three buttons in this bottom panel, the Expand Mask Region button, the Trim Mask by Sketch button, and the Add Mask by Sketch button. Each time you click the Expand Mask Region button, it increases the boundaries of the mask outwards by a tiny bit. This is handy because just like in regular inpainting, you want your mask to be a little bit outside of the area that you are trying to inpaint. This gives the AI context regarding where the boundaries are and will help avoid edge artifacts. I found that clicking on the Expand Mask Region button three to four times makes the final inpainting result better. You get less edge artifacts on the edges where you have inpainted. Here is an example. On the left, we have an image that does not have an expanded mask, and you can see some edge artifacts clearly on the side of her arms and her shoulders. And on the right side is an image with an expanded mask. As you can see, the edges are more clear and better defined without any fuzziness or the weird artifact that looks like partial clothing. You can use the brush tool to draw on the image. Then, when you click on the Add Mask by Sketch button, the area you drew on will be added to the mask. Conversely, if you click on the Trim Mask by Sketch button, it takes away a portion of the mask underneath the areas that you have drawn. These two buttons are necessary sometimes to adjust the mask a little bit. Now that the mask is ready, we can go to the left-hand side and look at the Inpainting tab. Copy in your positive prompt and negative prompt. Then under Advanced Options, you can choose a sampler, sampling steps, and CFG scale value. For the sampler, be sure that you know how the model you're using would behave with the sampler that you have selected. I have a pretty detailed video that goes over this concept. Check it out if you haven't seen it already. In this case, I will pick the Euler sampler. Since I wanted to use the Realistic Vision version 3.0 model, and I know that the Euler sampler works for a wide range of sampling steps and CFG scales for the model that I'm choosing, so it would be a good choice. I picked 80 for sampling steps and left the CFG scale at 7.5 because I know this combination of sampling steps and CFG value will generate good results for me with the realistic vision model. This is based on prior testing of the model. Again, check out my previous video and it will make more sense. I'll link it here in the upper right hand corner. Make sure to use a random seed, which is minus one. When all your values are set, click on Run in Painting. If you haven't downloaded the in painting models before, the in paint anything extension will download it for you. So this may take a couple of minutes depending on your internet connection. Once the inpainting is complete, your results are going to be in the Outputs folder. And there is an inpaint anything folder created just for the images created by this extension. The inpaint anything extension is pretty nice. It has pulled the inpainting versions of whatever models are stored in my Stable Diffusion Models folder and listed them here for, for me to use. I did not have to download these models separately. In terms of the inpainting models that I have in this list, I found that the default Sable Diffusion 2 inpainting model is not great. Some of the other inpainting models works a lot better. For example, the Dream Shaper model or the Realistic Vision inpainting model. Of course, you may have a different set of inpainting models available to you and you want to experiment with what works best for you. Here is an example comparing the Stable Diffusion 2 inpainting model versus the Realistic Vision version 3 inpainting model. In both cases, I used the Euler sampler, 6T sampling steps, CFG scale of 6, and I used Fancy Evening Gown as the prompt and copied over my entire negative prompt from the original image. And as we can see, 
the impainted gown on the two right-hand side images are clearly better than the two left-hand side images. Note, these are not cherry-picked results. Let's go through an example where we will change the background and other features of this image. First, I will select a Segment Anything model that gives me the background in as few regions as possible. Here, I chose the SAM VIT large model that gave me a segmented map like this. And I am selecting as many of the background regions as possible by drawing lines through the colored regions or just putting a dot on them. Don't worry if you didn't get some of the smaller colors or regions, we can fix that in the next step. From the mask that was initially created, it looks like the clothing was also selected. So I will take the brush tool, zoom in on the image, and select the area for the clothing. Then I will click on the Trim Mask by Sketch button to get rid of this part of the mask, leaving only the background. As we can see, there are some small areas in the background that was not initially selected. We can fix this by clicking on the Expand Mask region a few times, and that will enlarge the white masked area to include those smaller mist areas. Okay, I've expanded the mask quite a bit now, and it covers the entire background. Now I want to change the background to a beach setting, leaving the negative prompt blank, and under the Advanced Options, the sampler will still be Euler, Sampling Steps 80 and CFG Value 7.5, then click Run in Painting. I want to show you another method to create the mask for the background. I am selecting the Mobile SAM segmentation model, which gave me a mask that makes selecting the woman in the image easier. Then, I am selecting all the areas that are associated with the woman. But this time, before clicking on Create Mask, I will check the Invert Mask checkbox. This will create a mask of the background like this. But, we will need to clean up the mask a little bit with the Trim Mask by Sketch function. This is a bit easier to do than what we just did a few minutes ago since there are only a few lines to erase. Once we have gotten rid of the extra lines and spots, click on Expand Mask Region a few times to fill in the holes in the background. I didn't do it here, but you can also use the Add Mask by Sketch function. When you're satisfied with the mask of the background, click on Run in Painting. I didn't like this background that was first generated, so I clicked Run in Painting again to create a new background. The second one is much better. I like the palm tree, ocean, and the sandy beach in the background. Now, let's change her clothing to something that better fits the scenery. I'm going to load the new image into the Input Image section, then generate a segmentation map by using the Mobile Sand model Actually, we can see that the segmentation map that was generated was not ideal. So I'll try the FastSAM-X model. This time, it gave me the clothes in one region and color, which is great. Let's select this region and generate the mask. Then click on Expand Mask Region. I think I clicked on it five times here. Then coming over to the In Painting tab, we want to change the prompt to Swimsuit. All other values can remain the same. Then click Run in Painting. The first generated image looked pretty good, but I noticed there was this white area next to her hair. This was because the mask was a bit lacking in this area, so I needed to expand the mask area a bit more. Then click on Run in Painting again. 
and we can see that the white area here is gone and we have a pretty natural looking new image. Now, you might want to put in negative prompts if you are not satisfied with what you're getting from the inpainting. And you might also want to run the inpainting a few times and try to choose the best looking image out of a few rerolls, which is what I did here. In the end, I decided to go with this image with the blue bikini. Now, I'm going to load it into the input image section and we're going to change her hair color. The process is essentially the same. Pick a segmentation model that can give you the best segmentation map for the hair area. In this case, it was the SAM VITH model. Then, select the hair area and generate a mask. Fix the mask if needed and expand the masked area by clicking on the Expand Mask Region button a few times. Again, since this is in painting, you might need to re-roll this a few times until you get a good image. For me, I like this one with the pink hair, so I will go with this one. Please do me a favor and click the like and subscribe buttons to help support this channel. Your likes and subscriptions help me grow this channel and allow me to continue making quality content, so thank you. Now before we can wrap up the video, let me show you a bit of bonus content that will fix some of the minor imperfections with this image. We can see that in this final inpainted image, her left shoulder is missing. Her hair at the edges are still brown and some of her hair blends too much together with the background palm tree. So what can we do to fix these minor imperfections? The answer is we can go through a simple image to image latent upscaling such that the AI can adjust or fill in a little bit of the missing details. First, we need to make sure we have the original positive and negative prompts. Note, you might have to get your prompts from the original image because if you use the PNG info from the inpainted result, you will probably just get pink hair in the positive prompt field, since that was the last prompt associated with this image. For resize mode, I will keep it on just resize. I will set the sampling steps to 50. You can set it higher if you want. This image is at a 2 to 3 width to height ratio right now. I want to upscale the image, but keeping the same aspect ratio. So I'm setting the width to 720 and height to 1080, which is about a 1.4x upscale. The idea here is to upscale the image a bit and in the process let the AI fill in some of the missing details, thus fixing the minor imperfections. So the upscaling does not need to be too large. I will set the denoising strength to 0.25 because I want a little bit of change to the image, but not so much that it will change the overall composition. Now, you might want to experiment with the different denoising strength values to see what you will get, but the rule of thumb is, the higher the denoising strength, the more changes you will see in your image. Here, I tried 0 0.25, 0 0.35, and 0 0.45. But I compared the three and thought that 0 0.25 was just right. It fixed the shoulder and the hair issues and added a bit more detail to the image. The other two settings were a bit too much. And that's it. We have just went over how to use the inpaint anything extension to change just about anything in an image. But that is only part of what this extension can do. Tune in next time where I'll show you some of the other functionalities of this fantastic extension. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I would appreciate it if you show your support by clicking on the like button and subscribe to this channel. It will help me a lot. Thank you. And I will see you in the next video.